I am so excited to show you something new. Today, I'm going to show you how to chalk paint on ceramics and then use wood stain to glaze it. And we're going to start with this cute little powder container. We're going to be using homemade aqua chalk paint. And finally, we are going to use Minwax wood stain in the color of Jacko Bean as our glaze. Our first step is going to be to clean our piece of ceramic, and I've actually already done that. So let's break out our brushes and our paint, and we will get to painting this. We're also going to be using Folk Art Pure Gold as an accent. I'm going to set up my work area really quick, and I'll be right back. First thing we're going to do is paint the town blue. Or is it paint the town red? I don't know, but we're going to actually paint the talc blue. I'm just going to go ahead and set that to the side, and we will paint this container. I'm using a chip brush to paint with, and I'm not going to just... I'm not going to overbrush. If I overbrush, then this project is not going to uh, receive the paint very well. Okay, now because I am impatient and it's actually a great hack, I'm going to go ahead and run over to my blow dryer and blow it dry and I'll be right back. So I think this first coat covered quite well, but we are going to need one more coat. Pat on the back to my chalk paint. Uh, just pushing down a little bit and using the bristles to get into any uh, lower areas works fantastic. Uh, painting does not have to be perfect because we're going to be glazing over it and the neat thing about glazing is that it will pick up all the indentations in the paint so the more little bit of indentations we have the better and I will be back again after I blow dry this piece so it will be about 10 minutes for me but about one second for you this talc ceramic container has dried overnight and it is completely dry. So next step, we are going to add some wood stain. It's called Jacko Bean by Minwax as our glaze. So let me show you how to do it. And that is the color of our wood stain. We will also need some gloves for protection. I'm a safety girl. Oh man, it won't snap. We are going to grab a rag. I use my children's holy old clothes. I'm going to dip the rag into the stain. I don't want the whole rag to have stain on it and just kind of squeeze the excess out. And we are just going to basically rub this stain all over this container. We will be using a clean piece of cloth to wipe this off with. The longer you let it sit, the darker it's going to be. Make sure that you thoroughly rub it in to all of the nooks and crannies. It is now fully covered with the wood stain. It doesn't have to be perfect because we'll be wiping it off. Next, we will grab another piece of cloth and wipe it off. Wipe at a fairly uh, decent pressure. You want to push kind of hard to get all of it off. The more you rub, the more stain you will get off. So it's up to you on how much you want to take off. You can purposefully gloves are too big. You can purposely leave a little bit on. You could even kind of speckle it a little bit and then leave it to dry. So I'm just going to kind of do my thing real quick with this and see how I want to uh, have mine look and then we will continue.
We'll let this dry overnight and come back and apply the final step, which is a clear coat. Next, I'm going to take a clean rag and I'm going to wipe the letters of the talc container a little bit more to make them stand out. I did take my gloves off for this process because I found that the glove was reapplying the stain back onto my piece and that was not what I was going for. If you have a piece similar to this, you can do this technique as well. You just rub with a little bit harder pressure and more times over whatever area you want to be lighter on your piece. You should have wiped enough of the stain off to be able to hold it with your bare hands at this point. But you will want to check the areas that you're holding to make sure that they are still uh, in line with what you're looking for. You may have to give it a little wipe to fix things. A Q-tip would work fantastic for this. Once one piece of your fabric gets dirty, just change it to a clean spot and continue to wipe. I'm sure you can already see how the word is standing out more now that we've wiped it a little bit more. Which is exactly the vintagey look, vintagey, I don't know if that's a word or not. That is the vintagey look that I am going for. Tell me what you think. It stands out so much more. So. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and we will be back tomorrow after it dries to apply the clear coat. Now that the towel container has dried overnight, our next step is to spray it down with some polyurethane, which is fast drying and made by Minwax. So let's go outside and spray that towel container. Our next step is to recoat within two hours, and the directions say to apply two to three coats. So I'm going to go ahead and apply those coats, and I will be back once this is done. This top container is now had a chance to dry, and it is finished. So check it out. The clear coat provides some extra shine, which is very nice and it also provides extra protection from scratches. It helps keep everything on. And I actually applied four coats. I found that the chalk paint soaked the clear coat in quite a bit. So four coats was perfect for my projects. Which by the way, I have two other projects besides this that I encourage you to watch. I will link them in the description and at the end screen once they are complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss another upload. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful, fantastic day. Peace out.